All right, friends, here we go with Lighter Than Air, Sophie Blanchard, the first woman pilot. And there is a movie out about her life. Um, it's PG-13. Check with your parents about watching that. It's called The Aeronauts. Her husband was also into aviation and actually died in a balloon crash. It was November 1783. For months, France had buzzed about the brothers Montgolfier and their mad dreams of floating bags in the sky. Now the moment had arrived. The brothers had painted their balloon in royal blue and decorated it with red draperies, golden eagles, and smiling portraits of the king. They lit the straw underneath and the giant bag swelled with smoke and hot air. Two, two brave aeronauts climbed inside. They waved at the crowd and then the handlers let go of the ropes. The great marvel began to rise, as did a great gasp from the spectators. It trembled slightly as if it was caught by the west wind, as it was caught by the west wind, and to the roar of a half million voices below, it floated calmly out of sight, high above the rooftops of Paris. Sophie Armand was five when the men first flew. Sophie heard the news in Trois Canon, her sleepy village by the sea, and her heart swelled and swelled. She ran along the shore, her arms stretched out like wings, and watched the seabirds scatter. The little sandpipers were plain and nervous on land, just as Sophie felt, with her great fear of carriages and crowds. And yet in the air, the shy birds seemed like entirely different creatures. They danced through the sky like clouds. Oh, thought Sophie, to fly like they do. Even as Sophie grew older, France remained mad for balloons. Fashionable ladies wore balloon-shaped hats. Families, families dined on balloon-painted plates. In newspaper cartoons, men blew themselves up with hot air and rose into the sky. The balloonists were heroes. Most famous of all was the daredevil Jean-Pierre Blanchard. He and John Jeffries were the first men to cross the English Channel by balloon. They had to toss everything overboard to keep from crashing into the sea, even their trousers or pants. But they made it. There they are, jumping things off. So they would be lighter and rise. Sophie read everything she could about Blanchard and his fellow adventurers, and there was one thing she couldn't help noticing. All of the balloonists were men. The sky was no place for a woman, some said. It was too cold up there. The air was too thin. The winds too fierce. Women were made of weaker stuff. Their place was on earth. Deep in Sophie's windswept heart, she knew that couldn't be true. One day, Sophie went to one of Monsieur Blanchard's ballooning shows. Afterward, Blanchard noticed the odd little woman with the faraway eyes. Do you like the balloons, mademoiselle, he asked. I belong in one, monsieur, said Sophie. Blanchard, startled, began to laugh. But when he saw the fire behind her words, and then he knew at once she was meant for the air. They made an unusual couple. The streetwise old showman and the shy, bird-eyed little woman but they shared something as wide and deep as the sky. Before long, they were married, and Sophie Armand became 
Sophie Blanchard. The first time Sophie left the ground with Jean-Pierre, she watched the earth fall slowly away. She felt the shudder of the shifting wind. She felt the air turn crisp and cold like the first taste of fall. She saw birds fly beneath her like fish beneath a boat. She watched the houses, the carriages, the crowds, so big, so loud from below, shrink into harmless dolls. After flying twice with her husband in 1805, Sophie decided to go up alone. No woman had attempted it before. When news got out, there was quite a stir. People clucked their disapproval, as people do. But again, Sophie's fear and doubt melted away as the wind carried her up, and she felt only a breathless thrill. The incomparable sensation, she called it. Flight was as dangerous as it was thrilling. In 1808, during his 59th ascent, Jean-Pierre suffered a heart attack and fell from his balloon. After an agonizing year, he died from his injuries and Sophie was left alone. For a time, she could not bear to think of ballooning. But one gusty day, as she watched the birds swooping and dancing, she felt dancing, she felt the sky call to her again and she knew that she must return to it. From now on, she would fly solo, the world's first woman pilot. Sophie began selling tickets to her ballooning shows that Jean-Pierre had done, and people came by the thousands to see her. Quickly, she learned how to make a living doing what she loved most. Sophie's daring knew no bounds. More often than not, she went up in little more than a hanging chair. Not a full basket, huh? It's that little chair there. She went up by day and she went up by night. One cold night over the Alps, her nose began to bleed and icicles formed on her face. She went up in good weather and she went up in bad weather. Once over France, she crashed into a marsh in a storm and nearly drowned. She went up high and she went up higher. Once she was forced to climb and climb to escape a sudden hailstorm, finally she climbed so high that she passed out in the thin air. Down below, they gave her up for dead. 14 laters hour, 14 laters hour. 14 hours later, she landed. She said it had been a pleasant nap. By this time, the bird woman, as she was known, was as famous as anyone in Europe. She was summoned to Paris by Napo Emperor Napoleon himself. The Imperial Palace seemed like a million miles from her seaside village, standing there in the throne room. She felt like the ugly duckling turned into a swan. The emperor named her aeronaut of the official festivals, as well as chief air minister of ballooning. When Napoleon got married, Sophie set off fireworks from her balloon as the crowds gasped and applauded. When the empress gave birth to a son, Sophie flew over Paris tossing out leaflets to announce the good news. From time to time, with the world laid out beneath her, Sophie would let her mind drift to the beach of her childhood. She saw herself chasing the little birds along the shore and then up, up into the sky. Now she realized she had lifted the spirits of thousands along with her. That old world, the one she now soared above, had fought for so long to put limits on women. Yes, Sophie said to herself with a smile, there is a limit. 
and that limit is the sky. Author's notes about the life of Sophie. Lighter than air. The story of Sophie Blanchard, the first woman pilot. And the name of the movie again about her life is The Aeronauts. <laughs> 